Are you disappointed by modern day aviation? Well, this video might be for you, as we do an overview of the top 10 aircraft ahead of their time. At number 10, the Blanca CF. We start off with a very vintage airplane. Titled the CF, it was a prototype for the first cabin monoplane. It was able to carry four passengers in the cabin, which was pretty much unheard of at the time, and the plane was also quite pristine, as it won several races during its early years. Balanca was bold for making a transport aircraft, and therefore only one CF was built. Unfortunately, the plane did go through many different owners, and it underwent some extensive modifications. However, it is now restored, and it resides at the Boeing Aviation Hangar in the United States. At number 9, the BD-5. Jim Beatty was a talented builder who brought homemade jet kits to the market. It essentially gave people a dream to build their own personal jet for the cost of a high-end car. It turned out that the kits were pretty complex for hobbyists in the 1970s, and Beatty's company eventually shut down only after a few years. This was not to be taken away from the impressive homemade jet kit, as it was titled the world's smallest jet with a maximum speed of 320 miles per hour. A new version called the Michael Jet is built upon the legendary BD-5, and you might be able to see this jet as it performs regular air shows to this date. At number 8, the B-52A. Many aircraft come to mind when it comes to longevity, but the B-52 is probably the most infamous with the first variant flying in 1952, given it over 60 years of solid service, with many more years to come. The B-52A is the first variant of this iconic aircraft, and only three were actually built, which were primarily used for testing. It had a combat range of 3,500 miles, with a maximum payload of 43,000 pounds making it to be a very dependable bomber for the United States Air Force. One B-52A also became a carrier for one of the most impressive X-planes ever built, but we will get into that a little bit later. At number 7, the YB-49. Many believe that the B-2 bomber is the first official flying wing, but a mysterious aircraft with a similar design was built way before the B-2, and it flew just after World War II in 1947. It was designed to be a long-range tactical bomber which could carry over 16,000 pounds of payload. But there were only a handful of YB-49s ever built, with several being converted from the YB-35 which was prop-driven. Ultimately, the plane lacked target accuracy and it faced stability problems, in which it took several decades for flight stabilization technologies to catch up to. At number 6, the Horton 229. Another aircraft featured the flying wing design, and this one was even built before the YB-49. The 229 was a heavy fighter capable of going 600 miles per hour with its two turbojet engines. It also carried two 30mm cannons along with a couple thousand pounds of bombs. So the Horton was really advanced, and it was even rumored to outperform the ME-262 in a dogfight. Multiple variants of this craft were developed during World War II, but they were quickly destroyed as the war came to an end. Only one plane survived, and it's now on display at the Mary Baker Restoration Hangar in Virginia. At number 5, the SR-71. The Blackbird dominated the sky with a Mach 3 capability, and it still holds the record as the fastest and highest air-breathing manned aircraft. That's pretty good for being over a half century old. Only 32 of these fine jets were ever built, and they were strictly used for reconnaissance. Pilots claim it was kind of like riding in a spacecraft orbiting Earth with its nearly soundproof cabin and 85,000 foot flight ceiling. The Pratt & Whitney J-58 engine powered the iconic stealth aircraft, which each producing over 34,000 pounds of thrust. And unlike other aircraft ahead of its time, the SR-71 was in service for over 30 years. At number 4, the Avro Arrow. Imagine that you built one of the most sophisticated and advanced jets in the world, only to have the government just cut it up into scrap metal. That is pretty much what happened to the Arrow, and to many Canadians including me, we see it as a symbolic representation of federal government stupidity. The original Arrow was a supersonic jet cable of Mach 2, but the Mark II variant featured air quad engines which produced significantly more thrust. There was even speculation that it could be possibly a Mach 3 aircraft, which was pretty much unheard of in the 1950s. Ultimately, the two-seater interceptor was intended to defend against long-range Soviet bombers, and it could carry up to four Falcon missiles in its internal carriage. It also incorporated a cutting-edge titanium and high-temp alloy frame, something which was revolutionary at the time. But ultimately, this meant nothing to the government, and the prototypes were destroyed. At number three, the Concorde. The Concorde reigned the sky for over three decades, and it set a new precedence for commercial supersonic flight. Coordinated and designed under the Anglo-French Treaty, it was arguably one of the most impressive airliners ever built. A total of 20 aircraft were built under the Billion Dollar Program, 
but the commercial variants carried over 100 passengers at Mach 2. The Concorde was a masterpiece, but it was eventually plagued by hype in its costs and a depressed aviation industry. Several crashes also was the final dagger into the program, but ultimately the Concorde was one of the best aircrafts ever built. And now, half a century later, we're just finally starting to see new supersonic airliners being developed. At number 2, the XB-70. The B-52 was one of the most important planes ever built, but a drastic design was needed to break into Soviet territory. Meet the XB-70, a supersonic bomber behemoth capable of going Mach 3 with a maximum takeoff weight of over 500,000 pounds. With a flight ceiling of over 70,000 feet, it was established as one of the most extreme jets ever made. The prototype could accurately focus its own shockwaves and use it to generate lift and save fuel, thus making it to be a feasible long-range bomber. But ultimately the bomber became impractical due to newly designed ICBMs and surface-to-air missiles. But ironically the XB-70 was so advanced it set a strong precedence in the Cold War, and it was one of the reasons why the Soviets developed the infamous MiG-25, which also led to the development of a fourth generation fighter which could claim air superiority. So thankfully there is still one XB-70 left unlike the aeroplane, and it's at the USAF National Museum. Well, it kind of seems like the last several decades have been pretty dry when it comes to aircraft innovation. But keep in mind that there are some pretty incredible planes being built right now. And these are the only ones that we actually know about. But let's finish this video off with number 1, the X-15. The manned hypersonic rocket powered aircraft can literally fly to the edge of space of over Mach 6.7. And although you couldn't reach orbital speed, it had the capability of launching smaller rockets into space. It launched off the B-52 bomber and its rocket powered flight only lasted for around 100 seconds. The craft was built out of a cutting edge nickel chrome alloy employed in a heat sink structure in order to withstand the 1900 degree temperatures within the atmosphere. It had to feature two different control systems, one with smaller rockets on the nose and wings for controlling in space, along with normal rudders for normal airspace control. There were a total of 196 successful landings in the program, but several crashes did occur, with one leading to the death of pilot Michael Adams. Pushing the boundaries of flight has evidently come at the cost of several different pilots, but these heroes will always be remembered for their unmatched skills and their fearless determination. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.